how are you dressed? So yes, I do sit here now. I mean, the blouse at the top is the most important part of my wardrobe now, rather than the bottoms. But I'm not in trackies, okay? You have to trust me on this one. I'm not in trackies. I am in um, trousers. On my feet are Ugg boots, but they're posh Ugg boots. I actually imported them from New Zealand and they you know, so they're not horrible, scabby old ones. I do have older, scabby old ones, exactly the same. It took me a while to find a pair the same because I like these ones. But do you see what I mean? I'm, I sit here prepared for the day, looking as I would look if someone came to my home. I don't look scabby. I don't look rough. I smile. There's a smile in my voice now. I have a smile on my face now because I'm doing something I love. And I'm hopefully transmitting all of that to you. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello, and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. How are you? I'm pretty good, I have to say. For me, it's a Monday when I'm recording this, and Mondays for me are really busy. I absolutely love them. I organize on a Friday so that I know, you know, if I've got work to do at the weekend, I'll often send an email to my list on a Sunday because I'm sort of sitting down and preparing myself for the week ahead. I don't like to sit on a Sunday going, oh no, my week ahead's coming up. I really like to be motivated on a Sunday for the week that is ahead of me. And so when I get to the Monday, I've been for a walk this morning. Um, my husband walks to work every morning. And so I do an 8K walk. So I walk to the parklands. I'm in Adelaide and we have big parklands surrounding the city. And I walk to the parklands. I get to the parklands, I turn around and I come back a different route. So I have a nice circle that I can do first thing in the morning. And so it means when I get back, I am ready and rearing to go. It does mean that my voice is a little cold at the moment. So I hope it's coming across okay with you. When I'm walking, I'm thinking about the day ahead. And I'm thinking about who am I going to see? How am I going to help them? What is it that they need from me right now? I've been in business for 15 years. I've been in healthcare for 30 years. And I grew up in a family where my father was a salesman. So he worked for a newspaper and he would sell advertising. So now they're called ag- advertising executives. But back in the day, they didn't really have a name. And he used to call himself a spaceman because he said, I sp- sell space in a newspaper. So now, of course, he'd be an advertising executive and you know, we all get different names for different things as the world has changed. But it means that I grew up in a household where people were understanding other people's needs. We're not, um, you know, there's different cultural mores and the way people do things. In America, you can really see the sales. Um, when I go back to New Zealand now, I can really see the sales on the television. When I watch adverts here, I can see the sales and I can also see how they're manipulating us. And when I think about that, it because I can see it, it doesn't bother me as much, but I know pe- other people are sucked in by it. But it depends what it is, because I can be totally sucked in by things as well, if I actually want them. So today, when I thought about what am I going to talk to you about, I thought, well, why don't I talk about how we put ourselves out there, how we're perceived, what it is that other people see of us. So if you think about a newspaper, for example, um, my father, you know, he used to say, well, the front page is the most expensive because that's what people see. That's what they eye up. If you're waiting in the queue at the supermarket, there might be newspapers stacked there. You'll read the front page and maybe you'll get to the second page. It's always the right hand page that's more valuable than the left hand page because that's where the eye travels to. Um, stories would be spread so they'd have the foot as if next time you look at a newspaper, have a look, the headline and the first few lines are on the front page. And then the rest of the story, you have to go to page three, five, seven, nine. You have to go and find the rest of the story because they want to put an advert where the eye is looking. So there's lots of things that 
we see and yet we're not doing to put ourselves out there as a profession. You know, my sister works in PR. Now, PR is where they help you to look right, okay? So that when people see you, they see what you want them to see. They hear what they want you to hear. Um, Some people, you know, politicians use PR all the time. Big companies use PR as well as advertising because there are two different ways of looking at things. Advertising is a different way of doing things to PR. But when we are in our business, and I do talk um, to my graduates, my graduate mastery program members about this, and I talk about this quite a lot, and it's in a lot of my talks, is you need to put yourself in your client's shoes. That's number one. So how is it that you do that? Well, it's really easy, actually. You walk in as you walk into your business as though you're someone else. You walk in, in my case, it's through my front door. And often my front veranda will get covered in clutter because, you know, I've got children and a husband and the stuff goes on the front veranda. So that looks dreadful if someone's coming to visit my practice. So I regularly have to check the front veranda. When they come into the house now, they didn't used to be able to, but since renovation, they can now look all the way down to the back of the house. And then they go into the front room. They walk through the door. What is it they see on the wall? In my room, it's an Aboriginal dot painting. And um, so that's the first thing they will see. Then they'll see the sofa. So they'll start heading towards the sofa. My desk is beside me. Once they're sitting down, so you need to walk in. What is it you see? Look around. What is in front of you? Is there a mess that they can see? Is there? For me, it's always a pile of leaflets and paperwork and that the reps give you and that the companies send you and I think I'll read that later I'll read that later and journals and trade journals and magazines and all the rest of it and they literally just go into this huge pile and the pile gets bigger and bigger and bigger and then sometimes the pile will slide because many of those magazines have got shiny paper so then it'll slide and then I'll have two piles and I think I'll get back to that I will get back to that of course I'm never going to get back to them I don't want to throw them away because I haven't read them yet (laughs) but what is it they see in my case, they come in and they, they they won't see that when they look straight ahead of them. But when they turn around to sit on that sofa and they look to the other side, then they look at my certificates, my qualifications. I've got a lot of those. I've actually got them spread around the room because my wall, um, I'm in an old house and it doesn't really accept nails very well. So the old plaster just tends to come off the walls. So where what are they seeing? Where are those um, certificates? Where is it? What is it you want them to look at? Maybe you have a program that you'd like them to do have you got a sign up there that that's what they see make sure that you go through that system now perhaps you're online so you're going oh it's all pointless no point listening to this podcast because I'm totally online what is it they see behind you what is the look of the room like so I used a um, fake background you know a green screen for a really really long time but you disappear in and out of those and that looks really unprofessional in my opinion so I went to the effort to create a background. So those of you who've seen me in my groups in Strictly Education and Support and those of you who've um, worked with me online who are in you know, the academy, um, you will see my background that I made, that I created, that I built actually. So what is it that people are looking at when they're looking, when they come to see you? It doesn't matter where you are. What is your outward facing you? What flow do you have? What system do you have? Do you need help with that? I mean, that's what I do. I was um, with a mentee the other day and we realized she works in a chemist and how I could help her with showing the people in the shop, in the chem- in the pharmacy, that she worked there. She's she really, really supported by her boss, the pharmacist. And, you know, and here's this person that sometimes it's a struggle for, you know, Joe Bloggs to figure out why am I seeing a naturopath in a pharmacy? What is this person going to do for me? How is this person going to help? So we worked through that and she was thrilled by the end result, thrilled by the discussion that we had because it really, you know, and it was something that her boss would do and so she's been able to go back and say, let's, you know, implement these few changes and it's really helped. And so it's those sorts of discussions because people look at the front facing you. What is the front facing you? I mean, we all, how are you dressed? So yes, I do sit here now, I'm in the 
blouse or the top is the most important part of my wardrobe now rather than the bottoms. But I'm not in trackies. Okay, you have to trust me on this one. I'm not in trackies. I am in um, trousers. On my feet are Ugg boots, but they're posh Ugg boots. I actually imported them from New Zealand and they, you know, so they're not horrible, scabby old ones. I do have older scabby old ones exactly the same it took me a while to find a pair the same because I like these ones but do you see what I mean I'm I sit here prepared for the day looking as I would look if someone came to my home I don't look scabby I don't look rough I smile there's a smile in my voice now I have a smile on my face now because I'm doing something I love and I'm hopefully transmitting all of that to you And when you feel confident about who you are, because you know that you've streamlined either them walking in the door or you seeing them online, you've actually built up the proof of who you are. You know, we have this know, like and trust. And as you build up all of this background of who you are, the the outward you, because that's what social media is, social media is just the outward you. It's how you would like to be perceived a lot of the time as well. It's not necessarily true. But all of these things roll into one so that our clients can then see who they're working with, how they'll be working and what the flow is working with you. Now, I hope that's helped. It's just a short bite sized little chat today because I think it's really important that we are perceived the way we want to be, that our PR is up there. And talking about our stories and our bio, you know, we're doing that in the challenge and the challenge is coming up. It's a very different challenge. I do them differently every time. Um, you know, in the past couple of years ago, we did the 14 day challenge, which was really, really successful. And this one's a nine day challenge and it's slightly longer so that there's time for you to catch up. There's time for you to rest during it. There's time to recap. There's time to, time to do what needs to be done. We're not rushing through it powering through it trying to get it all done at once which is what I really struggle with in most of these challenges is that there's no time to do what we need to do so that's why it's actually over a weekend so there's catch-up time discussion time there's going to be Q&A's so um, if you go to my website and of course the link will be in the bio then you will find the nine day challenge so if you go to geraldineheadley.com forward slash nine day challenge you will find it's on the front page as well um you will find it there and please join us please please join us for that because i'd love to have you on board and i'd love to be able to support you to create the forward facing you that you want that you want people to see and it's really important that we have these things in our business ready to go so i will leave you to the rest of your day i hope that everything is planned out the way you wanted to go see ya Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.